This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Build your own website today. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I create my so-called micro worlds. I started a new Instagram page called Micro Worlds Official, on which I make these tiny little chunks of landscapes, and many of you were curious how exactly I make these. If you wanna support this idea, feel very free to follow the account. Would be great to hit that 10k mark. Anyway, these micro worlds started as ideas for NFT releases, but also ended up being just fun for Instagram. In this video, I'll go through the process with you and show you a speed art or two afterwards. Side note, this is not a tutorial, just a showcase kind of thing. Let's bloody go. So the first time I made a micro world, I made this sort of template, which I can use for all the other ones. Um, and it's actually pretty simple. So right here, we've got background plate, which is the background. And in there, I've also got these, which makes it look just a bit, you know, nicer and more shaded. And also this uh, this grunge stuff going on. And then also right here, I've got some shadows, which right now looks a bit weird. But when you put all the stuff over it, it's fine. So this is what I always start with. Now, um, the shadow is very easy. It's just a black solid. It's nothing super special. So uh, yeah. Yeah. So right now, let's first just add the title because today I'm going to make a um, desert landscape with like pyramids and stuff. So let's call this Egyptian desert because I'm pretty sure there's going to be more deserts in the future. There you go. And this is number 10. Let's change this text as well. This is where I can actually start making the... Uh, the desert itself so i'm not going to show you everything very detailed but just the basic idea for you to understand how this actually works and how i uh well do it so usually i just take stock images from like drone shots and stuff but this time i actually found this uh 3d model from sketchfab i think it was i'm gonna hide that and then i'm gonna take any selection tool and just make a selection of the top there you go and then i'm gonna unhide it and click the mask button there you go now it's in there the right area i think because that shadow i do not like and i guess this is pretty good. So then I'm going to take my brush and remove the areas where it's cut off. As you can see, there's a bump here. That's where it's cut off. It's really just looking what works and what doesn't. You can already kind of see the shape coming up right there. But then right here, it looks like these dunes are cut off. So I'm going to make sure to paint these back. There you go. Once again, this is just guesswork. At the end of the day, you're the boss. You can decide what happens. This is a bigger one. There you go. That looks pretty nice. And I guess that's it. Now, the next thing we're going to do, this right here is a stone texture but it has these nice layers which i think is perfect for the side of this thing this kind of looks like these are multiple layers of earth which is nice so i'm gonna distort it just like that this doesn't have to be all that accurate and then i'm gonna hide this and make another selection on the wireframe except now this area and then i'm gonna hit the mask button there you go put it below it and awesome okay so that looks a bit weird mostly because the color is totally incorrect so um first of all since the light is coming from the right this is the darkest side so first of all i'm gonna make it very dark just like that then i'm gonna use some color balance to make it a bit more the desert color and down here it should be a bit darker so i'm just painting some more darkening down here and this edge right here to make it look just a little bit rounded now the top layer right here this is all sand because well it's the desert so um then i'm gonna drop in this other texture which looks a bit like sand which is exactly what i need and then clip it inside the first layer like that and then below all the effects which makes it the exact right color there you go move it around a bit then i will hide it with a mask and now i can just grab my brush again and start painting right here to give it that sandy look just with the soft brush nothing special it just makes it look like there's this whole layer of sand maybe if i brighten that up just a bit it'll look even more like sand now that is pretty decent if you ask me by the way i have no idea if earth actually looks like this but i don't really care so that same whole thing i gotta do on this side as well except now a bit lighter a new selection again i'll use the same texture for this one and then maybe this time i'm gonna use some hue and saturation for the color and now it is again sort of guessing what's the best uh, darkness or lightness whatever you want to Call it. Then let's do the same sand thing again. There you go. Very quickly. And this edge is very... This edge right here is very sharp now. So I can just... Uh make that a bit softer and sometimes you see in the transition things don't really match for example this is very dark and this is very bright so that you can just manually fix by adding some uh, some darkness right here it shouldn't be as dark but just darker than the rest just makes it look a bit more realistic and if i now turn off the wireframe you can see this is pretty decent however there is nothing on it at all and since this is an egyptian desert i'm gonna put a huge as pyramid 
somewhere. So I searched on Envato Elements and then I found this pyramid, which is very big. I'm gonna make it a bit smaller and then also flip it because it's the wrong lighting direction otherwise. As you can see, the angle isn't perfectly correct. I don't know, I've always been very nitpicky in these uh, things. So I'm gonna just uh, change that. This should line up with this line. And this one should line up with this line. And then it should be about right. The difference it's not much, but it's something, and this definitely makes it look just a tiny bit more realistic. First of all, I'm gonna darken this side, because clearly this is not lit by the sun. With a brush and some exposure, very easy. And to make that shadow look just a bit more realistic, I'm gonna add some red. This should be pretty accurate. Then I'll take my brush again and just erase some stuff. Make it blend in just a tiny bit, because that dark edge really doesn't do it. This right here is also looking weird, so in order to fix this, I gotta unhide this mountain from it. And then also this one right here. This pyramid, however, clearly makes a huge shadow. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna paint right here. All the way back here. And that shadow should be a bit more red as well. Then what I also like to do in pretty much all of them is just make this tiny white edge. And that layer I then set to overlay and bring the opacity down to like, uh, I don't know, 30. So now we've got this beautiful desert thing with uh, a pyramid. Maybe for some more detail, I can put these birds in the sky. I'm pretty sure the size of this is not accurate at all. But to be honest, I don't really care. But of course, there is one thing missing. I'm going to go to filter and choose camera raw filter. There's nothing really special here. It's mostly just clarity and some, uh, you know, some slight enhancements, just changing up the lighting and color a bit. However, color grading is actually important. I like to add some color that actually matches the landscape. So for example, the first one, the tropical shore had a bit of yellow because it's sunlight, you know, and the sea would have had some more blue. Um, but this one, I'm going to do again, some orange and yellow because clearly it's very hot. It's very warm. So that is important when I make these. So this was before and this is after. After. Clearly there's this huge warmth. Then I add the text again and yeah, I guess that's it. Those are all the necessary steps I take for making a micro world. Now, clearly this wasn't very detailed, but I'm also going to do another one today in the form of a speed art so you can see the tiny little things I do in between because there's a lot going on and it's just impossible to show you everything in just a short video. So um, that is what's going to happen. So enjoy that. If you're interested in the NFT world, the first micro world auction is available exclusively on foundation.app and starts once the first bid is placed. So if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to visit the link below. Before moving on to the next one though, let me tell you something about today's sponsor, Squarespace. With Squarespace, you can make awesome website on your own without needing any knowledge about web design. It's amazing. It has all the necessary tools you could possibly need to create a fully functional professional website. I've created a website of my own and I didn't even have to put much time in it, it's crazy. You can either design your own thing or take a template from their collection. Change designs, add complete galleries, which is great for portfolios of course. There's a whole bunch of cool options. There's members only options, donations, email campaigns, social sharing, analytics, blogger tools, it just simply doesn't end. I myself am very excited about it. It works great, it's easy and covers everything I'd ever need for a decent online brand. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial and if you feel ready, use squarespace.com slash bennyproductions to get 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to the video. So, we've got micro worlds to make. Let's do some more.
and there you go. I have good faith there's gonna be a whole lot more since y'all overload me with cool ideas, which by the way, you can submit by either sending me a DM on Microworlds Official or commenting on posts. I also made this Instagram story list of goals and I gotta tell you, a thousand Microworlds is a bit extreme, I know, and I'm aware of how small the chances are of that actually happening, but this is how I push myself, I guess. I mean, how epic would it be though? A thousand of these. Anyways, um, that's it for today. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. And if you enjoy my overall content, feel very, very free to subscribe. And most importantly, smash that bell to stay notified about future videos at all times. Then I hope I'll see you in my next video.